camera speeding. I slightly tilted the camera. Oh no! There's quite a bit of news from this past week, but the first thing I really want to talk about is the recent Nintendo Q&A, which brings up two very kind of important things about what Nintendo's plans are right now, and just kind of their answers to some long-standing issues. And the first one I want to talk about is Joy-Con Drift. Joy-Con Drift is, of course, one of the biggest issues that the Nintendo Switch has had. In some cases, there are people who've had to replace Joy-Cons multiple times, some people have been lucky and only had one Joy-Con do it, and some people have even never experienced it at all, and they are quite lucky. But the point is, it is a major problem. Now, for a while, Nintendo has kind of been not super open about the issue. They've kind of acknowledged it and they've said, okay, we will take care of repairs past the normal warranty window because it is such a widespread issue. Of course, that is also limited to only certain countries. There are some areas where they still will not give you a hand with it. But in their recent financial Q&A, they openly admitted about the problem of Joy-Con Drift and even apologized about it. In the Q&A, current Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa stated, regarding the Joy-Con, we apologize for any trouble caused to our customers. We are continuing to aim to improve our products, but as the Joy-Con is the subject of a class action lawsuit in the United States, and this is still a pending issue, we would like to refrain from responding about any specific actions. In other words, they are openly admitting this is a problem, but because of the lawsuit, they don't want to make any kind of specific claims about what they're doing, which from a legal standpoint, I get. But at the same time, as far as how it kind of feels for people that have been experiencing this issue, it's not exactly the most warming feeling. Obviously, there isn't a whole lot they can do for a lot of the switches that are are already in circulation, whether it's the Joy-Cons that are having issue or even something like a Switch Light Stick having problems. There are, of course, the fact that they are taking care of repairs for a lot of people, but that's not helping anyone that buys a new one, and it's just kind of this constant fear in the back of people's heads. Of course, the main thing people are hoping to hear is that at some point we will get a new model or revision or something where this is a fixed issue and not a problem, and hopefully Nintendo will help out some people that are experiencing these problems really often by giving some kind of easy switch out. Did not mean for that pun, but I'm gonna leave that in there. Now, this is not the only thing of interest that came out of this Q&A. Something else that was brought up that's been on a lot of people's minds is what is going on with Nintendo Directs. We haven't had a true Nintendo Direct since 2019. We did have a mini one earlier this year, and there have been, of course, other presentations like Pokemon Presents. Well, again, going back to this recent financial Q&A, Furukawa also had statements in response to what is happening with Directs right now. And in his words, we feel Nintendo Directs are an incredibly effective way to present information directly to our customers in a very straightforward way. Inversely, times change and so does the most effective way to promote products, so there is a chance that a new, better way to present this information comes about. So we always like to examine all the possible ways to communicate this information to customers. Now, of course, the main kind of pervading theory of why we haven't seen a Nintendo Direct in a while is because of the COVID-19 situation. Even at the Nintendo Direct Mini that we had earlier this year, there was kind of that opening warning of, hey, a lot of the stuff being talked about in this presentation might not actually be true anymore because release dates are changing. And so one of the main prevailing theories right now is that we haven't had any new Nintendo Directs because Nintendo still isn't entirely sure what's happening with a lot of their different properties. Thus, why we've been seeing things like, for instance, solo announcements, how Paper Mario Origami King just kind of got announced out of the blue with a YouTube video and Twitter post. Directly commenting on the current state of Nintendo Directs and how things might change points to the fact that Nintendo Directs might not be a thing anymore. Uh, this doesn't necessarily confirm that we're not going to have any more in the near future, but rather Nintendo may be playing with the notion of kind of taking a step away from those and trying something maybe a little different, which is honestly kind of a surprising move to me. I know I've mostly spoken in defense of the fact that Nintendo Directs are not the only way to release information. Uh, there is of course the fact they can always just do individual announcements or handle things other ways, and that works in a current time when, you know, they don't fully understand what's going on with new game releases. But while defending those, I always kind of had the thought in the back of my head that, yeah, it's because COVID's going on, and as time goes by and things calm down, we're probably going to revert back to Nintendo Directs, and now it's looking like that might not actually be the case. Again, this doesn't mean that we aren't going to have any Nintendo Directs in the near future. I think it's very possible we're still going to get one sometime later this year, although, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they just stick to single announcements like they've done lately. But the point is, is that Nintendo Directs might actually be done, which is pretty crazy considering the fact that we've kind of just been waiting for a new proper one for quite some time now. It has almost been a full year, and it looks like it's just not 
gonna maybe happen. Now, while those two bits of information are kind of slightly more downer news, there are some upsides as well to the financial Q&A. Furukawa has also made statements that it looks like overall, while COVID has had some impact on development of things, it's not gonna completely derail plans for 2020, which means that there are games that we may not have heard about that are still happening. There have, of course, been tons of rumors regarding a 35th anniversary collection of Mario games, so that might actually be on track still for this year. And there's also just been plenty of talk in terms of just other titles happening that we haven't quite learned about. So while we are certainly dealing with a lot more unknowns than usual, thanks to the lack of Nintendo Directs, it sounds like we're still gonna be seeing quite a bit of stuff coming out this holiday season, which I am very excited for. It's worth noting too, they also quickly addressed the issue with the stock of Nintendo Switches. Production sounds like it's getting back on track, so it should start to become a little more available. Things have been getting slightly better over time, but there is of course still the issue of lots of people scalping Switches. Please do not buy a Switch for more than MSRP off of someone charging five, 600 bucks. Just be patient, try to find one when they're in stock at a store. They are starting to show up more often. It's just not quite as easy as it used to be. In other news from this past week, it looks like we might actually have an idea of when Microsoft plans to announce Project Lockhart. You know, Xbox Series S, that thing that everyone has talked about constantly and there have been plenty of leaks about, including supposedly the full tech specs of the system or at least a very good idea of them. And yet we still, don't actually have any official word of it existing. According to Eurogamer and various other sources, it looks as though part of the 2020 events that Microsoft has planned for the rest of the year leading up to the Xbox Series X launch, they will be announcing the Project Lockhart as part of their August 2020 event. Now this slightly counteracts some past rumors. There was talk before of the Series S being revealed in June, which obviously that's not happening at this rate, though that was likely as part of E3 or some kind of E3 sub event, which has been pushed back due to all the kind of COVID stuff going on right now. But there were also rumors that it would be part of their upcoming July event, which makes sense to me for them to separate them. The July event that we know is upcoming has already been kind of talked about as a focus of first party titles from Microsoft Studios. I think that's the smart thing for them to focus on. Having both of the event, I think could be a really great kind of just all in one SmackDown and response to what has been announced for PlayStation 5. But I get if they really wanna just focus on games for one event and then let Project Lockhart shine in its own separate event later on in August. Again, this is not an officially announced thing yet. Microsoft has not made any kind of official announcement at all that Lockhart is even a thing. But based on the current rumors going around right now, we are gonna be seeing it in August at that event. Again, at least based on all the rumors, Project Lockhart is meant to be a more affordable option of the Xbox Series X, something that is not quite as powerful, but will still be able to play next-gen games with great graphics, which means that it's not as pretty as the Series X, but as long as it can handle all the main graphic effects, including ray tracing, Honestly, I think a lower price tag is a lot more appealing to a lot of people out there. And if it ends up being significantly cheaper than either of the PS5 models, that is a big win for them. In slightly sadder news on the Microsoft end of things, it does look like they'll be closing numerous Microsoft Store locations. These were focused on all Microsoft products, not just Xbox, but of course, Xbox was a large part of that. They aren't closing every single retail location out there, uh, but the few that are remaining are gonna be a lot of the kind of major cool experience stores. You know, the ones that are in major dense cities, and have large locations with lots of stuff to show off. And even those aren't gonna be remaining as traditional stores. They're instead being converted into some kind of experience center, probably a cool place to show off a lot of the tech, but still putting a much heavier focus on buying stuff online. Now, some people are taking this as some kind of really scary sign that things aren't going well for Microsoft and therefore Xbox might be in trouble. I don't actually think that's the case here. I think it's important to focus on the fact that this might not be a sign that, oh, Microsoft stores were doing really poorly. It's just that online sales were doing a lot better. And so really just in general, a lot of the focus on business for people is to buy stuff online directly from Microsoft or even just go to other retailers if they're buying something like say an Xbox or a Surface. I'm not trying to be like a full financial analyst about how Microsoft in general is doing. The main point I'm trying to make here is some people are taking the closing of the stores as some kind of potential doomsday sign that the Series X is already lined up for failure or that they don't expect it to do great. That's not the case at all. In fact, I would even say it's probably an unrelated issue. It's just that they want to focus focus less on these physical retail locations and focus more on their digital storefront. One last little bit of Microsoft focus news, at least, is the supposed leak of a new Fable and Perfect Dark game. This started making rounds on Twitter after people discovered that there were some reserved Twitter accounts that only had one follower, which was a Microsoft employee. As it turns out, it's not completely true, kind of. 
it's a little weird. So in the case of Fable, it does sound like this is an actual reserved account that Microsoft has set up. However, they have made official statements saying that this isn't necessarily any kind of sign that this is a project they are working on anytime soon. It's just kind of standard business to reserve and hold these things. So if they do want to use it in the future and to make sure, you know, no one makes use of their IP. The case of Perfect Dark, however, is a lot weirder and kind of funny, actually. Uh, it turns out that someone saw the Fable Twitter getting reserved, and so they chose to reserve Perfect Dark game at the same time, and then hit up Microsoft saying, hey, is this an account that you want? Because if so, it's gonna cost money. If you do wanna hop onto the train of hoping this means that there's some kind of announcement for any of these games, I think it does mean that Fable is the one that is more likely to have some kind of comeback. There have been lots of rumors already persisting that Microsoft is planning to do something with that IP. It's gonna be really interesting to see what actually plans they have if it is real because the studio behind it, Lionhead, is no more. They have acquired Obsidian who is known for making a lot of different RPGs in the past, so maybe that's a company they plan to have tackle a project or it might be handed to someone entirely different. We don't know yet because we don't don't even know if this is real. Perfect Dark, on the other hand, that one's a much farther reach. I know there is a cult audience out there that would love to see it come back, but I would definitely not put a lot of faith in this particular sign. Now, while we're on the subject of possibly announced games coming up, it looks like Square Enix is beginning to tease that they'll have a number of announcements taking place over the rest of the summer. In a Japanese Q&A responding to a question about how the cancellation of E3 has affected their plans, they responded that they are planning on having multiple individual announcements happening throughout July and August. So it's possible that there were numerous games they had planned for, of course, the big June E3 event. And instead of having a single digital conference like some other companies like Ubisoft are doing, they're instead choosing to just kind of focus on each game individually as time goes by and make some individual announcements. There is no confirmation of what these games are going to be. I'm sure there are already tons of different theories people are coming up with and stuff they're hoping to see, but as it stands, there is no actual hint of what they will be announcing, but look forward to some new game announcements in the very near future, more than just one. And speaking of Ubisoft and their upcoming digital presentation, it looks like we've already had one major leak as far as what games are gonna be shown off at the event. Uh, it is not the return of any kind of major franchise or things some people are hoping for, like Splinter Cell, uh, but instead it looks like Ubisoft is throwing their hat in the ring for Battle Royale games because who isn't trying to get in on that very successful genre right now with their own new title, which will be focused on a more sci-fi spin, which I admit is a little more intriguing to me. Personally, I'm not a giant fan of the entire Battle Royale craze. I'm glad there's a lot of people who are enjoying it, and hopefully there is some more great competition being added to it, but Honestly, at this rate, we're getting to the point where everyone's trying to make one, and it's gonna be really tough to go up against a lot of the more established franchises. Still, that does knock out one major Ubisoft announcement from their upcoming July event. Hopefully they have a lot more lined up for it. I've got my fingers crossed for a lot of different things. Like I said, I'd love to see Splinter Cell come back. I know it's extremely unlikely, but I'm always gonna hold out hope that they'll do something with the UB art engine. I would love another Rayman, but who even knows at this point. As far as game releases go this next week, it's a little slower, but what individual releases we have do sound pretty exciting. Today is the release date of the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 on the Nintendo Switch. Tomorrow is the release date of the first DLC for Minecraft Dungeons. And this weekend, if you own a PSVR, you can look forward to picking up one of the most exciting games to make its way to the platform, Iron Man VR. That's it for the news this week. As always, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Kevin Kenson to see my up-to-date thoughts on things that are happening in the gaming world. I'll also occasionally post Q&As like the one I posted just a couple days ago. And I'll be seeing you guys next Tuesday with another one of these videos, along with a couple other releases in between. Until then, see you guys later.